Hello, welcome to Myla the Hybrid and this is Limiting Factors. What is a limiting factor? A limiting factor is just a, a resource that is in limited supply, that is in scarcity, in such a way that an organization cannot fulfill its objectives, let's say uh, meeting sales demand. Sales demand for product A is 10,000 units and product B is 2,000 units, all of which require a total of 8,000 kilograms of materials. But we find that an organization can only obtain 6,000 kilograms. And this calls for a way uh, for an organization to make an optimal use of resources in such a way that contribution is maximized. So that's a limiting factor. So a limiting factor is simply a resource. And simply, the resources are normally uh, explained in a simple way uh, as four M's. And the first M uh, means men. Men by men we mean labor. Let's say labor hours may not be sufficient. Then materials. The second M. Materials may not be enough. Let's say kilograms. And then we have machines. We might have insufficient machine capacity. Let's say in terms of hours. And then we have money. All resources consume money, so uh, maybe direct labor budget might be limited, direct materials budget could be limited, anything. So these are resources. For our case, we'll deal with just a single limiting factor. And for multiple limiting factors, linear programming is usually used, but we won't uh, take a look on that. So optimal production plan. An optimal production plan will ensure that contribution is maximized and thereby profit. What are the steps? First of all, as a time as to whether a limiting factor exists or not. So, to know whether a limiting factor exists or not, you have to compute the required resources and compare it uh, to available resources. If you require more than what is available, then a limiting factor exists. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. If it does not exist, meet all the sales demand and no need for further steps. But if it exists, go to step 2. And the following is step 2. Compute contribution margin per unit of each cost unit, for example, a product. Step 3. Compute contribution margin per unit of a limiting factor. Let's say contribution margin per hour. And then rank the cost units with those having the highest contribution margin per limiting factor being ranked first. That it means that those having the highest contribution margin given a limiting factor, say given a higher, will be earning a higher contribution. Then prepare an optimal production plan. Now let's go directly to a question and see how we solve it. You are told Sousa makes two products, mass and sow, as you see your products here. You are given unit variable costs for mass and sow, direct materials, direct labor and variable overheads, so they are both variable. Note that contribution equals to sales minus variable cost. Do not include fixed costs. And the good thing is that we are already given variable costs. We are given sales prices for mass and for sale $14,000 and $11,000. And we are told during the month of July, a variable direct labor is limited to 8,000 hours. So this could be a limiting factor or could not be, but it is it has a restriction, so you have to check whether it's a limiting factor or not. Direct labor hours and then direct material budget uh, was limited to uh, $20 million, so you have to check. We are given a sales demand here, mass 3,000 units and south 5,000 units required. Determine the optimal production plan, the plan that will maximize profit given that the fixed cost per month is $20 million. Solution now. So we start, with, we start with step one as usual, existence of a limiting factor. You are given direct labor hours available, it's 8,000 hours. We are going to check. Now we have to compute the required labor hours. Direct labor hours required to meet sales demand for both products, mass and sow. We are given demand at 3,000 for mass and 5,000 for sow. Now we have to compute hours per unit because we need to compute total direct labor hours required. 
So if you know hours per unit and you multiply by the units that will be sold, you will know the exact hours needed to be able to fulfill that demand. So direct so labor hours per unit to obtain it you just take direct labor cost per unit you divide by labor rate. And the good thing we are given the question labor hours per unit for mass was six thousand dollars and the labor rate was given at three thousand dollars per hour. Here six thousand dollars or three thousand dollars per hour you obtain two. And for the case of sow, direct labor cost per unit was three thousand dollars and the labor rate was three thousand dollars per hour. Divide and we get one. Then we go and compute total hours required. How do you obtain the total hours required now? You take two. This is hours per unit. You multiply by 3,000 units and you obtain 6,000. And the same here, you take one, one hour per unit, times 5,000 units and you obtain 5,000 hours. If you add up 6,000 plus 5,000, you obtain 11,000 hours. So we require a total of 11,000 hours to meet sales demand. But there is only 8,000 hours. So it is clear that direct labor hours is a limiting factor. So ever since our question deals with just a single limiting factor, we are all, almost certain of what we're going to do. But in the question, if you are given a second limiting factor, you also have to test it. We are also given a direct material budget which was limited to $20 million, so you also have to test it. So direct material cost required to meet sales demand, you have to compute it the same way as they did for direct labor hours. So demand, 3,500. Since this is direct material cost, then you we, we, we use direct material cost per unit. For mass it was 1,000 and for sow it was 3,000. So to obtain total direct material cost, you take material cost per unit times demand. So 3,000 times 1,000, 3 million. 5,000 times 3,000, 15 million, which gives us a total of 18 million. So we require 18 million, but the budget available on direct materials is 20 million. So this is not a limiting factor. So we have concluded that our limiting factor is direct labor hours. And so we can proceed with step two. Step two is all about computing contribution margin per unit of a product. What is contribution? Contribution equals to sales price minus variable cost per unit. That's what you get contribution margin per unit. So selling price was given in dollars per unit, 14,000 for mass, 11,000 for sale. Then variable cost we are given a total of 8,000 for mass and 7,000 per sale. Be careful, this is all about variable cost. If not stated, if the question is clear and no further information is given, direct materials and direct labor seem to be variable. Note that. Take a great note. Then we subtract and obtain contribution margin per unit as per step 2 dictates. After that, we compute contribution per labor hour since the labor hours was a limiting factor. So we are given labor hours per unit as 2 for mass and 1 for sow. If you divide, you, you obtain contribution margin per labor hour. So 6,000 over 2, you obtain 3,000. And 4,000 over 1, you obtain 4,000. Then you rank. Looking at this, for a given hour, sow earns $4,000. While mass earns $3,000. So this is more profitable, so it is ranked first. And then this second. Just like that. And you remain with the final state, which is optimal production plan. So now we know that direct labor hours are available with 8,000. Now we just need to find a way to use it in such a way that contribution will be maximized. So as we said, we'll start producing the product which is most profitable, which is sow. And sow required 5,000 hours because it required one hour per unit and 5,000 units were to be produced to meet the sales demand. So required hours for sale is 5,000. If you use 5,000, we remain with 3,000 because originally we had 8,000 hours. 
So remaining half is 3,000. If, and if you look at mass, mass actually required 6,000 hours, but 6,000 hours are not available. We only have 3,000 hours available, so there is no way we'll just have to use the 3,000 hours and remain with zero here. So as you see, hours per unit times units, you obtain total hours. And here, hours per unit is 2. By what should I multiply with so as to arrive at this figure of total hours? So you take 3,000 divided by 2 and you have your 1,000. thousand divided by two you have one thousand five hundred here and this will give us an optimal production plan which is five thousand units of sow and one thousand five hundred units of mass here three thousand over two you obtain one thousand five hundred if you wish to compute the profit although it wasn't asked profit equals contribution margin minus fixed cost contribution margin for mass was 6,000 and the units produced were 1,500 and the same goes for sow contribution per unit of 4,000 units produced here 5,000 so 4,000 5,000 and actually our fixed cost was 20 million so if you subtract you obtain you remain with 9 million so this is how uh, we obtained our uh, the units to be produced on Mars. Thank you.